Now Sabine Dardenne is 36 years old. Who would have thought, looking at this beautiful, life-loving young woman, that at the age of 12 she was abducted by a sexual maniac and survived 80 days of nightmare, loneliness, powerlessness, fear and pain. Sabine lived in the provincial town of Charleroi in Belgium. She was a rather obstinate girl in any case, very independent and did not let herself be offended. She often argued with her older sisters and mother. Perhaps it was these character traits that could become her support and foundation so as not to go crazy. On that ill-fated day, Sabina took her diary to school, signed by her mother, in which there was a bad mark in mathematics. She got on her bike and went to school. That morning, her father watched her daughter leave and followed her with his eyes to the entrance to the bridge. The girl waved to him, then turned towards the college, and he also left. She was carelessly pedaling, not looking around, when suddenly a van cut her off. It got dark in her eyes, they threw a bag over her head and shoved her into the car. Sabina even tried to resist, but she was too small for that. She was 12, but she looked barely 10, 45 meters and 33 kilos in weight. The girl was so petite, so thin, that high school students often asked her, Hey, are you sure you're studying here? After bringing the victim to the lair, the kidnapper put some pills in the prey's mouth. Sabina screamed, to which the man leaned towards her and said hoarsely, Shut up! Nothing will happen to you. He showed the girl to a bunk bed, ordered her to undress and get into bed, which she did. Immediately he put a chain around the baby's neck and fastened it with a lock to the ladder of the bed. He put a hygienic bucket next to it. The chain was about a meter long, so that it could only reach the bucket. At first, everyone thought about the girl's escape, because this is the first thing that came to mind, knowing her character. Then there was a version of kidnapping for ransom, the home phone was tapped and the parents jumped up from any call. Even Sabina's father was suspected, because he saw her last. All this time newspapers printed materials about the investigation under huge headlines, Sabina disappeared, raids in Rumali, helicopter will help find Sabina, vain searches. A helpline for witnesses was organized in the gendarmerie, wanted notices were printed, which were hung on the walls of houses, shop windows, and distributed to passers-by on the streets. They combed all the corners, gendarmes conducted the usual survey of neighbors in such cases, a helicopter patrolled the neighborhood of the town, even college children participated in the search, combing forests and wastelands. Hundreds of motorists have put wanted notices on their cars. 150 policemen and 116 military participated in the raids, but all in vain. The girl was searched for 80 days. The school photo of the missing girl was posted on all the walls in the country and even abroad. Now Sabina belonged to the sorrowful list of missing girls and girls in Belgium. On the second day, the kidnapper unhooked Sabina from the chain and took her to another room, probably his own, with a large bed. She later called it the Golgotha Room. It was there that the girl was first harassed. Soon he told the girl that you choose life or death, naturally she chose life and he told her that I would hide you, and if you try to escape you will be killed. 
He deceived her by saying that her parents had not paid the ransom, and his boss would now kill Sabina, so he offered her a choice and hid her, and tell the others that she was dead. The girl was searched for 80 days. The school photo of the missing girl was posted on all the walls in the country and even abroad. Now Sabina belonged to the sorrowful list of missing girls and girls in Belgium. The future maniac Mark Dutroux, nicknamed The Shame of Belgium, by journalists, was born in Brussels on November 6, 1956 by his parents, teachers by vocation. Mark's father and mother were real fanatics of their business. Immediately after the birth of Mark, a couple of teachers went to Africa to Burundi on a humanitarian mission and spent four years there. But, apparently, carrying the holy and eternal to other children, the parents paid little attention to the upbringing of their own son. Or maybe he was just born that way. After returning from Africa in 1962, Mark's parents divorced. The mother of the future maniac raised five children alone. It's possible that she just didn't have enough time to pay attention to Mark. Anyway, Mark grew up hot-tempered and aggressive. Because of his character, the boy studied very poorly and while he received a secondary education, he changed as many as four schools. At the age of 17, Mark, with a sin in half, masters the skills of an electrician, leaves his father's house and moves to the Belgian Harlem, the province of Charleroi. Most likely, it was there that he made acquaintances with representatives of organized crime in Belgium. There he also found his first wife, as well as an accomplice in future crimes, Michelle Martin. For a while after his marriage, Dutroux was engaged in petty crimes. Car thefts, tourist robberies, assaults without causing serious injury, etc. Most likely, the Belgian Mafia bosses liked Mark's activities. Therefore, when he came with a very serious business project, he was given capital for promotion. And the business project consisted in the fact that Dutroux and his wife would kidnap little girls and girls, subject them to torture and rape and shoot all this on a video camera. Such films are very much appreciated by various passive perverts, and you can earn good money on them. What the maniac did to Sabina, she called his nastiness, because she did not know how to define these disgusting touches. I asked myself so many questions, I had the feeling that I was locked in this stinking barrack for many years, but I didn't understand anything. A woman recalls the days she lived. The girl had a Sega game console, a briefcase, she could occupy her time with these things. Every time he came for Sabina to take her upstairs to feed her or for something other, unfortunately, it was almost always for other, he would say behind the concrete door, it's me. If the girl did not hear his voice, then she should not have moved, much less raised her voice. When Sabina had been in captivity for 74 days, she asked her captor to bring her a girlfriend. He kidnapped 14-year-old Letizia Delfes, but his car was recognized by local residents. Letizia spent six days in captivity. The girls were found only two days after Dutroux was arrested. Dutroux is also responsible for the deaths of four girls. Eight-year-olds Melissa Russo and Julie Leung, also abducted and abused by him, died of exhaustion in the same basement while Dutroux was serving time for car theft. There were other murders, Dutroux buried 17-year-olds and Marshall and Effie Lambrex alive. Dutroux never confessed to any of these murders. The trial of Dutroux began only eight years later. The criminal was sentenced to life imprisonment. His wife and accomplice Michelle Martin, who knew that there were children in the basement, but did not release them and allowed them to starve to death while her husband was in prison for theft, was sentenced to 30 years in prison, but was released after 16 years. 
According to Sabina, after her release, she wanted to return to normal life as soon as possible and was hiding from unwanted fame. She admitted that others put pressure on her to behave like a victim. Darden also refused to see a psychiatrist after the first visit. In 2004, she published a memoir about the abduction. The book has been translated into 22 languages, including Russian, and published in 30 countries. Darden, as of 2016, lives in Brussels and worked in the State Council.